<laughs> Just a name. Look, the thing about it is that you, what you've got to remember is that with fibromyalgia, because there is no underlying cause that is obvious, you get a lot of long names, and when you actually find out what they are, you find out it's a bit like erythema toxicum. It sounds, ooh, that sounds really fancy, but it just means a red rash. <laughs> you know, so, so, so fibromyalgia at lateralizing pain syndrome so, well, it just means pain whoopsie down <laughs> one side of your body. That's what it means. So if you don't know what it means and you're a doctor, you use a different language <laughs> and you try and cover it over so that everyone else doesn't know you don't know. <laughs> Like that, that, that pain was familiar, and I kind of got used to that, but yes. I didn't like it when it, when it started shifting. And at, once it started shifting around, then it became more like fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. Say if you've got it all the time, yes, in one place, yes. worse than the other, like your feet and your legs, especially at night, and yes. right now sitting down, my legs are aching, mm -hmm. but it's still over the rest of your body, but it does yes. not sometimes as bad as the rest of your body, but you've always got it here. Is that still fibromyalgia? Yeah. The answer is, you may have, and this is unfortunate, <coughs> but you may have fibromyalgia yeah. and something else. Yeah. Yeah. And that's actually really common, is that's that fine, yeah. fibromyalgia can be primary, it's your only problem, or you may have fibromyalgia complicating <coughs> other things. That is very, very common to have fibromyalgia if you have some kind of what is called an autoimmune disease, mm -hmm. something like lupus, oh, no. rheumatoid arthritis and so on. It's very common. You start off with this <coughs> inflammatory condition with a lot of inflammation and it's hot and it's red and you're achy and so on. And then on top of it all, okay, on top of it all, the pain starts spreading <coughs> and you start producing the other symptoms of fibromyalgia. So. Uh, and, I mean, you could, you could have wear and tear in your feet, you could have osteoarthritis in your big toe. If you have fibromyalgia... And I do have it at last year on my left foot. <laughs> if, you have fibr years. if you have fibromyalgia, then the pain that you feel from your left toe is going to be more severe mm. than if you didn't have fibromyalgia. Mm. So, oh, I see what you mean. Okay, okay. it explains a lot. Mm. Is it a red Yes. Oh, what good questions. Look at this. Yes. And in fact, can we? Okay. Okay. Fibromyalgia is hereditary. And in fact, there's increasing. The, the figure is if there is someone in your family with fibromyalgia, you have an eight times increased risk of having fibromyalgia yourself. So that's a huge thing, and in fact, there is a type, you know, there's lots of complicated uh, ways that you can inherit, um, but there is something called an autosomal dominant, sounds flash, dominant, <coughs> and that is in fact what is now thought to be how fibromyalgia is, is <coughs> actually, so it's actually... And this is a big, big deal. It's an autosomal dominant, which means that you only need to carry one, <coughs> one half. You know, you get one half of your genes from your mother, one half from your father. You only have to have one parent with fibromyalgia, and you you have a bigger risk of carrying the of, of actually presenting with the disease and passing it on to your children. So that's the first thing. And the second is that it's much, much more common in women. And, and if I look here, I don't see. I'm, God, I'm, I'm a dying species. I'm the only man in the So much, much more common. And, and in fact, the figure is seven to one. It may well be that that figure is not correct. Because if a man has fibromyalgia and presents to the doctor, Often they'll say, no, no, you can't have fibromyalgia because you're a man, which is quite incorrect. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and so, with this, you know, you know how you've had, have, have you all had frustration in trying to get to understand that this is what you have and, and with, okay? Because the fascinating thing is, you know, it's been 
<coughs> it's been recognized for hundreds of years and been given lots of other different names. And the word fibromyalgia was only made, was, uh, it, was, it was invented in 1990. And in fact, it was only given official recognition as a reality in 1993. It used to be called fibrocytis. It's fibrocytis. Uh, there, 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 actually, there were any number of funny names. There was something called fibromyelogenosis. You see, the name gets longer if, if you really don't know what it is. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. And, and it was thought to be... Oh, you're, you know, you're just making it up, or it's all part of because yeah, you're yeah. you're a bit you're a bit <coughs> nutty. You get yeah. this this condition, but the, the the truth is that there's a huge increasing number uh, amount of volume of evidence as to what's going on in fibromyalgia. There's still a lot of confusion, and lots of people have different theories. It's a it, but the the main. Uh, body of knowledge is pointing towards one direction. So fibromyalgia was called in, it was 1993, in, the, um, in Copenhagen, which was a, a huge world um, meeting, the most common disease, the most common cause of chronic musculoskeletal pain. So that makes it, and, it, and, and the incidence is 2 to 4 Percent. Now, does that sound like a lot? Doesn't it? Doesn't, but, but now, here, let's, just, let's do some sums. This is fascinating. How many people are in the world? Okay. I, think, I think at the last count, it's just going up all the time, maybe five, six billion people. So if you take, let's take five billion people, and if you want one percent of five billion, so you knock off one north, that's 500 million, not a number. So that 50 million people is 1%. Mm -hmm. And we take it somewhere in the middle, maybe 3%. So, so that's 150 million people in the world <coughs> have fibromyalgia. So what have we got? Four, 4 million in New Zealand? <coughs> so that's 40 New Zealands. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> that's a lot of suffering. Yes. Dr. Katna, some sources say that it's brought on by physical or emotional trauma, yes. which I myself would agree with. Yes. So, um, in a family, you could have perhaps that gene, but it may not eventuate into fibromyalgia unless you have the physical or emotional trauma. You would you agree with that or not? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, what you do with your genes. You're given, it's like a, you're given a hand, uh, if you play cards, you're given a hand of cards. Yeah. And then it depends on what you do with that yeah. hand, or what happens to you as to what kinds of diseases you present with. Mm -hmm. So fibromyalgia is, it's very well recognized that it can just poof, come out of the blue. Mm -hmm. But there are a whole list of causes <coughs> which are now recognized. And the, uh, should I write those down? Yeah. 